Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging hour discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Tom K. Wilson, provides you with insight and guidance from his years of experience as a successful real estate entrepreneur on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate, and much, much more. Here's your host for Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. Thanks so much for tuning in to our Real Estate Radio Live program today. Your number one source of all of your real estate needs and education. We're the broadcast broadcasting from the number one business radio station in the San Francisco Bay Area, KDOW AM 1220, the Wall Street Business Network. I'm Tom K. Wilson, your host for the 2 p.m. Wednesday edition of Real Estate Radio Live. It comes to you Wednesday, I'm sorry, Wednesday and Friday at 2 p.m. and Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. along with my co-host Joe, C- Joe Cacera, Mike D'Ambrosio, and Bobby Decker. If you can't make the live show, you can catch our podcast on TomWilsonProperties.com or on iTunes or on YouTube. And you can go to TomWilsonProperties.com for a lot of investor uh, education information, sign up for newsletters, sign up for events that are coming up, uh, find out what our latest products are, Wilson Investment product Properties, has uh, both turnkey uh, rental real estate houses as well as uh, commercial syndications that we have uh, available all the time. We welcome your questions and requests, and we're available for consultation if anyone would like some, uh, some thoughts and options and ideas about where they can take their portfolio. Um, we have with us today uh, one of my favorite people, Robert Campbell, who is a uh, uh, with us about uh, once a year on the programs, one of my favorite economists. He's a uh, he's a professional economist. He had his uh, economics degree from UCLA and San Diego State as an uh, MBA. He's been in real estate uh, most of his life. He had his first first investment at age twenty four. He helped his uh, dad uh, paint and rehab uh, products. He's done development and bought and sold a lot of products. He's uh, got a uh, very good reputation as a real estate uh, timing expert. He has a wonderful book that you should get. He has a newsletter that I've uh, been getting for about uh, 10 years. And he comes up, uh, he comes and speaks around at various places. And he'll be at SJREI in the, uh, up in the Northern Cal on the, what date is that, Laurie? June 9th. On the June 9th, if you're uh, listening to this uh, prior to that date of 2016. And with us to help co-host um, uh, Robert Campbell today is Laurie Graymont, my good friend, who's the uh, CEO of Summit Assets Group and also president of the SJREI organization, the premier uh, real estate investment group in the uh, Northern California area. Laurie, welcome back. It's always a pleasure, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. And Robert, nice to have you back on the program. Boy, those are nice things you said about me. Yeah, uh, guys, I think most of it's even true. It is true. <laughs> yeah. It's I always mean, it's true, and I'm not, I'm not afraid to say so that, you know, I'm one of those people that if, you're, that if you like something and you're good at it, you just keep getting better and better and better at it. And, you know, after 14 years, after I wrote my book 14 years ago, Tom, I tell people, and it's true, I've doubled or possibly tripled the level of knowledge in these last 14 years. I mean, and you just get you just get wiser, smarter, you talk to real smart people and you get better and better at what you do. And uh, if if everything goes correctly, you have a chance in this world because I don't I don't like to get overconfident. <laughs> and lear- learning is fun, isn't it? I'm proudly tell people that um, in, in spite of the 40 some years of experience I have in real estate, there's not a day that goes by I don't learn something new. That's oh, what, absolutely. That's what, sometimes that's what, you learn little things, sometimes you learn big things. And that's what, that's what separates the real pros from the real non-pros. And people have asked me at times, Tom, that they call me on the phone and they go, they're, they're shocked that I answer the phone. They go, I, I can't believe you answer your phone. I said, do you know why I do that? And they go, no. I said, you can't believe, you wouldn't believe in the last 14 years some of the phone calls I've had. People that I knew about, you know, 30, 40 years ago, and I still follow today. Some of the people are in their 70s, 80s, and even 90 years old. And they're, they're still in the real estate game. Not that they don't have a lot of money and could retire and play golf, but they love what they do. They've read me, and they call me, and they just want to discuss a few things. And there, there you go. You just learn more and more and more. So it's, uh, 
it's a fantastic journey. Just like you know, I mean, you're on a fantastic journey, what you've done, Tom, in, in Dallas, Texas. I mean, um, I really respect that a lot. Thanks. And you're, and you're living large today with, as, you know, instead of only price, uh, cash flow, now you're getting price appreciation. Yep, indeed, indeed. No, it's, uh, it's a great, great journey indeed. And I know that you believe strongly in, uh, not only having a successful business, but if you have, uh, if you pay attention and invest in your, uh, and your health, both body and mind, that that uh, allows you to be more successful in your, in your business as well. And you're, I'm in, brother. You're a great example of that. So, um, so Robert, the um, we are in a here we are again uh, in a in a crazy, crazy spot where there might be some um, real estate uh, indicators that say we're we're bubbling up, uh, but we've got these uh, still these subsidized interest rates and loans. Uh, going on that uh, that mitigates some of that natural real estate cycle uh, activity that should happen. You know, we love we love Doug Duncan's uh, quote, the economist from Fannie Mae, who was on recently, and he says it's like a, it's like a patient getting twenty seven pills from the doctor and asking what his prognosis is, and the doctor says, "I have no idea. We've never been in a situation like this before." So what do you so, <laughs> like that? So so what do you so what do you think? Um, what do you think uh, is, is happening here? We in some in some uh, scenarios, you could say, "Gosh, we've we've got to be in a bubble again," and yet uh, we still have these these low interest rates. You well, know? down payments. I mean, Wells Fargo's now gone to their three percent down payment program for anything four seventeen and under. Yep, and uh, and of course, uh, you know, I tell people if there's only one thing that I've learned over my years of investing it's that the market is thousands of submarkets so you can't generalize but so much but if if one were to generalize a little bit talk a little bit about uh what what kind of space are we in right now well we're in a very very positive space for real estate tom the um the, and and even though that you know the uh uh, just like the stock market a lot of people say you know it's not a stock market it's a market of stocks People use that same analogy for real estate, and they say it's not a housing market. It's, it's each individual market varies city by city. To some degree, that's true, but to another degree, that's not true, because the individual cities, if you follow trends the way I have for the last 30, 40 years, that, you know, the way very, very few cities, Tom, buck the national trend. You know, some may peak early and bottom early. In other words, you know, peak, peak and bottom late. However, they all tend to go with the national trend. And the national trend right now is still, you know, pointing up in a very, very strong way. In fact, you know, even though it's a minor acceleration, prices, uh, price appreciation is speeding up right now. And frankly, I don't see anything that's going to change that in the near future, um, although something will. <laughs> Doug, uh, I made reference to Doug Duncan before since he was here recently, and uh, and he uh, he said on his last two meetings with uh, Janet Yellen that he was surprised to see how astute and aware she was that we had a shortage of uh, of product, and uh, some of her questions to him were, uh, you know, what why. Why do we not have enough product, and uh, you know what's that trend going to look like? So as long as there's a shortage of supply relative to demand, that's an upward pressure too, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly. That's another fundamental factor. And do you know one of the reasons, even though I haven't written about this, I'm going to write about it probably in my July timing letter, you know what's contributing to that shortage of demand? What's that? The shortage of supply, supply. is the fact that government regulations have added $35,000 in added costs to the price of a new home or apartment project. So that makes uh, that that's a de-incentivizes developers to uh, either build or for the uh, consumer to be able to buy a new house versus an existing house. Exactly. I mean the the gap today between the price of a new home and an existing home is is Four miles wide, whereas in the past, a new home, I believe, only used to cost something like 10 or 15% more. Yeah, about Today, 15. I don't have the chart in front of me, but it's much more. And it's, the, it's those added costs, that, that, that extra $35,000 a unit that you've had to put on top. Therefore, builders aren't building it, building like they used to, um, for that simple reason that people can't afford it. So building is way down. That's one of the reasons why I think that this trend in housing prices could go 
higher than a lot of people imagine simply because they aren't building new homes. Uh, the supply is diminishing and the demand is still strong, and that's going to push, high, push uh, prices higher than I think a lot of people uh, might imagine. Robert, can you explain that 35000 that you're referencing so our listeners understand where that's coming from? What it is, you know, I haven't built for 30 years. I mean, you know, I'm, as, as, as uh, listeners should know, I'm the son of a home builder who built and developed for 50 years. And I built and developed for my own account for 10 years. And it's simply a matter of permits, processing fees, new fees that they're, they're putting on the back of developers in order to get a, uh, a project approved because the cities are going broke. We all know that. So, you know, who, who to put the fees on to? You know, the people that are going to be receiving the benefits, i.e. the new home buyers. And I can't, I can't detail what all those costs are, Lori, mm-hmm. but I do know that it's a, the sum is close to $35,000, and it's a lot of little things that add up to that amount. Well, I can attest for that as a builder. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I mean, I know, because I've been, I've been through that process, lived that process for um, many years myself, and, and went through it with my, with my father. So I know, and that's what they're doing. And we all know that the cities... You know, the cities are going broke, and primarily from the standpoint that they, they can't afford to pay the, the generous pensions that have been um, promised the, the retirees. And so they've got to make up that uh, shortfall, that shortage somehow, and part of it is they're laying it on the, the developers who have to tack it on the price of a house. Yep, absolutely. And then they aren't hiring the staff to get the permits through any, any sooner, and so they're delayed two or three months from their promised dates, which is also a cost to the developers and builders. What's the, sol- oh, what's the solution? What's, what's going to change, um, you know, uh, getting more supply of product? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I guess, guess that pause it. says that's, it all. <laughs> that's, that's the answer. I know. It's a kind of – and it, and it just what, keeps – you it's, know, I could, I could, t- you know, we and you and I could discuss that for four hours, and we yep. still wouldn't come to a conclusion. No, no. I guess the bottom line is that we've got um, we what just have a limited down to is this: is the Federal Reserve Board, in order to keep the wheels on the car and, and and to keep the debt machine going in the United States, and that's and that's what's financing all the growth since 1980. Yep. They just have to keep essentially printing money, which is inflating things which makes things even more difficult to, for retirees and everybody else to keep up. And that's why they're desperate for money right now. And, you know, what we have to do is we have to solve some big structural problems. And top of that list is pension reform. Before we get into that, Robert, <laughs> we're going to lo- run out of this segment. So good stuff we're talking about. Stay with us and hear about some of uh, Robert's predictions and where he thinks things are and what different uh, cities are doing. Uh, stay with us, KDOW 1220 AM. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. We have with us uh, in studio today, uh, Lori Graymont, who's the president of SJREI, who's going to be uh, sponsoring and hosting Robert Campbell, who's on with us today, uh, who's our real estate timing uh, expert and economist. And uh, Robert's going to be uh, here with us on July... June. Uh, June. 9th <laughs> June and 11th. June 9th. <laughs> and then for a workshop on uh, June 11th uh, up here in Northern Cal. So if you're listening to this before that time, uh, go to sjrei.org and sign up for both the evening and the workshop because uh, Robert has a wealth of information about uh, real estate timing. You know what I like about Robert uh, with the uh, other... A uh, very limited handful of economists is that um, they're right most of the time. <laughs> they focus on real estate uh, timing, and uh, Robert, along with uh, Dr. Doug Duncan and Bruce Norris and Sean O'Toole uh, and uh, Peter Schiff, all call the crash uh, exactly right. So those are the folks you want to follow. 
Robert, we're talking a little bit about uh, the rock and the hard place that the um, we're in as a as a monetary system. And I know I've seen some films about how uh, all great empires in the past uh, crashed when they converted to fiat money, which we're on. So that's a little scary, but we don't know if that's tomorrow or if we're going to you know survive another couple generations. But um, if we keep the interest rates down and printing money, then um, try to keep the economy up, we create that uh, inflation problem. But if we raise interest rates, then uh, we might not be able to afford that. So, uh, what do you what do you think? Uh, if you were if you were dictator, what would you what would you <laughs> what would you do monetarily for this country? We're we're kind of in a point of no return, aren't we? In some respects, absolutely, we're in a point of no return. That you know we're we're screwed if we do, and we're screwed if we don't. Yep. Because l- let's address first the lower interest rates. Okay, the low interest rates have certainly buoyed the market. You know, the, the U.S. stock market is at or near record highs. The U.S. real estate market is at or near record highs. Yep. The U.S. bond market is at or near record highs. That all sounds good. And, and the reason the Fed is engaged in its current monetary policies of, of essentially 0% interest rates is the fact that, that what they are hoping for is that when the, the masses see that all these markets are booming, that they will, they will uh, automatically... Uh, have a sense of financial well-being, go out and borrow money and spend on things which will drive the economy back up to its, uh, its robust potential. We all like drinking our Kool-Aid, don't we? Oh, yeah, and the reason that isn't happening because is they've totally misgaged what's happening, what, what these monetary policies have done to the population as a whole. With respect to, you know, the Fed right now is saying, okay, we want to, we want to get at 2% inflation. They claim, you know, that the, the, the Fed claims that inflation is right around, you know, 1.9, 2%, however you want to measure it right now. Those claims are false, you know. Those claims are false. And if you just do some realistic, you know, uh, uh, gauge, use a realistic gauge for inflation that measures the essentials of life, such as uh, renting a home or buying a home, uh, health care, energy, and uh, what's, what's the, my gosh, I draw a blank on, on what the fourth one is, uh, health care, the, the inflation rate isn't 1.9%, you know, for the last, since 2000, it's 3.1%. So when you start compounding the essentials of life, they're getting, three, uh, they're getting more expensive at 3.1% more per year, and incomes are, are, are flat or maybe going up at 1% a year. That means the American consumer every year is falling behind 2%. And like it or not, Americans are having a hard time getting by and paying their bills. Most people don't like to admit that, especially if you're a guy. You know, I, we, you know, I ask my friends, how you doing? Oh, yeah, you know, I can, I can kind of tell it's not good, but they go, yeah, everything's fine. Mm. I know it's not fine. Guys today would rather admit they take Viagra than admit that they're having a hard time paying their bills. <laughs> and, uh, it's not you know, a macho thing, but right. the statistics bear it out. You know, the American middle class is shrinking because the rate of inflation, the cost of living is increasing at about 2% per year faster than their incomes, and that means they have less and less and less to spend, and that's why people are upset. My good really friend, upset. Uh, my good friend Tom, uh, my good friend Tom Hopkins says, uh, you know, if anyone asks you how, how things are, you should always uh, answer, Unbelievable, because <laughs> that'll, that'll handle most any situation. We have with us today Robert Campbell, uh, economist and uh, real estate timing expert, along with Laurie Graymon and the uh, studio president of SJREI. We're talking with Robert about the economy, housing, where things are headed, what the factors are, and how you can make decisions uh, based upon facts and information. So stay with us on Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. 
So, Robert, uh, we have Robert Campbell with us uh, and uh, Laurie Graymont in the studio today. And we're talking about uh, real estate economics and how that affects your decision in uh, investing and, uh, and, and decisions on buying and selling real estate and, uh, and everything else you do that's uh, financially uh, related. Uh, to what degree are we uh, surviving economically because we're the least dirty shirt in the laundry, or as uh, someone else said, the uh, the best looking horse outside the glue factory? Right, exactly, and that's exactly true. That Europe's Europe is about to crash and burn. Uh, China is in really tough shape. Even though I don't study China much, because I there's no I have zero confidence in in the data that's released out of China. Uh, Japan's in a real tough place, and the I just read uh, about a month ago that there's something like 30 or 40,000 millionaires have left Europe in the last two or three months, and guess where they're bringing their money? The U.S. The U.S. Yes, That's it's why a... the stock market, the stock market's likely to be stronger than, than most people believe. The U.S. Uh, housing market is likely to be stronger, and all our asset markets are going to be continue to be strong as long as the, the world's deteriorating around us. And that's why I believe that the U.S. is going to be the last Ponzi scheme to collapse. Yep. I read that uh, in 2015, $87 billion worth of uh, real estate was bought by uh, foreign investors last year. Yeah, China, for example. China is big buyers in the U.S., and 35% of the money they bring to the United States goes to California. Yeah. Well, we know that they just park their money. I mean, they'll pay, you know, 25 to 30% more than what anybody else here will do, and they just park it in right. real estate. Yep. Right. It isn't about price. It's about safety, Lori. Yep, exactly. They're trying to do something. They're, they're not sitting there trying to, you know, um, you know, make 20 offers on a commercial building, on commercial buildings and trying to get the best price. They just bring it over, and whatever the price is, they pay it, and then they, they wipe their brow and say, whew, um, I'm happy I did that. That's yep, right. Yep, they're just uh, land, land banking things. Right. So, uh, so, how, so you have any thoughts on how long we can uh, ride this horse? Well, as long as the... the as you know, I'm a trend follower. I'm not an economic prophet. The, but I think, you know, based on the things what we've talked about, that the, the shortage of inventory and the fact that, that uh, uh, capital is flying into the U.S., I think this thing could go longer than a lot of people imagine, could go, could go higher and longer than a lot of people imagine. I mean, and it, it all depends, of course, is that if the world starts crashing around us, you know, like, for example, if Europe crashes and burns, which I believe it's definitely going to do, of course, that hot money, that hot money that came into the United States from Europe, uh, it will leave the United States, and it, it'll go back, into, go back into Europe and pick up assets, at, uh, you know, a fraction of what they, what they sold them at, you know, because that's where the money belongs. It's not going to stay in the United States. This is, just, this is just hot money trying to find a safe home. And so when that happens, if Europe crashes around us and all this foreign capital starts, you know, starts leaving us, and then we have our own cyclical downturn, then it'll be over. Then it'll be time to, you know, to get to cash and, and leave certain asset classes and go into certain other asset classes. Uh, with respect to real estate, that I know a lot of your followers are um, are on this line for, I think the next downturn, and this and this is a, and this is based on on mathematics, uh, uh, patterns from the past, and not a pure guess. I think when this thing does turn down, if, if the U.S. housing market was to turn down right now, I think on a on a real inflation adjusted basis, housing prices in the United States would fall probably 20 percent, and you would add at least five, probably 10% to that number for California because that, that we're famous for our cycles of boom and bust. Okay, but Robert, we've got to stop. Right now. We've got to stop right there and have you back in, uh, in just a few moments to get some more good information from Robert Campbell. Stay with us. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. 
So great to have you with us today, and so great to have our uh, good friend, uh, an economist and real estate timing expert, Robert Campbell. And in the studio, uh, co-hosting with me today is Laurie Graymont, who's president of SJREI and CEO of Summits, uh, Asset Summits Group. And we're uh, talking about the real estate market and what the uh, indicators and metrics are and what's going on. Uh, Robert, uh, r- rental market, uh, it certainly has been very, very strong market here since the uh, crash. A lot of that is because uh, folks that lost homes have to rent. Uh, we've got the um, housing uh, ownership from uh, 69.5% down to uh, 63 or something, which uh, Doug Duncan thinks is a healthy area. Uh, how strong do you think the rental market? you think it's going to stay strong for quite some time? Yes, it's going to stay strong for, for quite some time. The, in, in fact, the, the, uh, whoever measures the, uh, the rental rate for the United States, I'm, I think it's the Census Department, we had a year-over-year reading of increase of 8.8% in the last, in, in the most recent uh, 12 months, Tom, for rental, for the price of rentals, which is another reason why the average American is angry and upset about what's going on. But, because, as you say, home ownership is down, is back to 1978 uh, levels, and even though that may be sustainable, that's not what everybody's been used to for the last 20 years, mm-hmm. is it? Good point. No, nope. no. Nope. No, nope, well. because, it, you know, everybody wants something for nothing, and, you know, to be able to live in a, in a nice, expensive home without the income to support it, but they're still upset about it. So rents are going up, and with the, the, the lack of supply coming to, uh, to the market, not only from new single-family homes, but that also applies, you know, to, uh, to a large degree to apartments as well. That, that, you know, new home building, new home building permits, and that includes single-family homes, condominiums, and uh, apartment projects, which are for rent. Okay. The supply of those is way down because of the increase in fees. So we could see rents, you know, continuing to, to uh, you know, keep going much higher than, uh, than the, the rate of increase in, in incomes for quite some time. Let me Which ask you, quick, Robert, let me ask you. Tom, that this is an unsustainable situation. Indeed. Let me ask you a quick question. Do you think, a um, little switch here to the, uh, do you think uh, in five years, do you think interest rates are more likely to be under 3% or over 5%? Over 5 over five. Okay. So you, uh, so you think in inflation is, um, pretty inevitable, uh, as, as short as five years. Well, it, it, I think, yes, I think we're going to see inflation way before then, way before then. And the fact that, that we're going to see this inflation, and even though the fed will try to, uh, continue to repress interest rates the way they're, they're doing is they won't be able to control it. it it'll get, it'll get out of control and interest rates will, you know, that uh, uh, will ratchet much, much higher. Tom, you and I are both old enough to remember. Remember during the 1970s, the Vietnam War, all that money that we were printing and spending and, and that, that the war wasn't being paid for with taxes. It was, it was being paid for by the U.S. Uh, printing press. Right, and we went off the gold standard in 71. So. Right. Um, the, in the 1980s, I mean, all of a sudden, inflation started ratcheting up, ratcheting up, ratcheting up, and all of a sudden, it reached a peak of 13% in the, the early 1980s, and that brought mortgage rates to, you know, 17 18%. Yeah, my first HUD loan, $500 down, 18% interest. <laughs> Robert, what can, uh, what, what can the individual do to help defend themselves against uh, what might come and take advantage of what might come? What you have to do is you need a plan, you need a strategy, you have to follow trends, and, and the, trends you have to, the, the trends you have to follow are in different asset classes, and you have to need to know which asset classes are going to pr- preserve your wealth, depending on the economic scenario that unfolds. I mean, we may see temporary deflation, like, we're, like, uh, uh, like, like it occurred in, um, in Argentina, you know, prior to the, the periods of high inflation, and then, but all in all, I think we're going to see, see high inflation down the road that, you know, that w- there's certain obligations that, that need to be defaulted on, the pension obligations, uh, the national debt obligations, the uh, Medicare and Social Security obligations, and they're going to be defaulted not by cutting the, the monthly payments back, but they're going to be defaulted by the fact that they're going to, they're going to continue to make those payments. They're just going to do it with money that's been devalued by a big percentage. 
So in other words, somebody that's a retired teacher, and let's say they're getting $4,000 a month in their, from the government retirement account, they're going to continue to get that $4,000 a month, you know, forever. The problem is, is the purchasing power of that $4,000 is going to be 50% what it used to be. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how we're going to, we're going to deflate our debt and obligations away. That's the likely scenario. And the reason I say that is you go back 50 years, or look over the history of the, of, of the world, and look at how many deflations we've seen versus how many, how many periods of high inflation and or hyperinflation. And if we only go back 50 years, I'm not aware of any deflations. So that's why I'm pretty confident it's all going to get inflated away. And you've, you've got to be, you're going to have to be, you're going to have to be out of bonds, you're going to have to be out of cash, and you're going to have to be diversified, diversified across the board in certain assets so that you will, that your wealth will be protected. If you can just hang on to what you got while everybody else is crashing and burning, when the dust settles and the blood dries, you're on top of the pile, dude. So have metals, have, uh, have real estate, that if it has debt, it's fixed-rate debt. Have, have, co have, co have commodities. Well, I'm personally of the belief what you don't want to have is too much of your assets in real estate because I believe at some point in the future that real estate is going to turn into a cash market because, as Lori talked about, that we're not going to see 18% mortgage rates with the debt levels, the amount of inflation it's going to take to... to um, uh, to um, uh, devalue these debts. We're going to see a lot more than that. You could see mortgage rates at 30%. And, and, and at the end, then, there's nobody in the world that's going to be able to afford it. And so real estate is just going to turn into a cash market, and that's when you're going to be, there's going to be a one- to two-year period where you're going, to be, you're going to be the one that's sitting there because you've you followed the trends and have your, your uh, money in the right asset classes. You're going to be able to buy real estate at 25% on the dollar. Okay, well, uh, we'll be back for a wrap-up here in just a moment with Robert Campbell, real estate timing expert and economist, talking about uh, what's going on in this uh, crazy world that we're in and where it might be headed and what we can do to protect ourselves and take advantage of it. So stay with us for, uh, for a few more points from Robert Campbell. We'll be back in just a moment on Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live, streaming live on iHeart, TuneIn, and KDOW.biz. For more information on today's topic or guest, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Tom K. Wilson. So if you've liked uh, what you've heard today, as you can tell, uh, uh, Robert's pretty monologue and, and uh, not very entertaining <laughs> at all. You, you, should, you should see him live and in action. If you'd like to do that, come to the San Jose Real Estate Investment Organization Club Association on uh, June the 9th, uh, 2016, if you're listening to this podcast or listening to this live ahead of time. And, and, Tom, if mm -hmm. they register in advance, come on Thursday, and they register in advance to come on Saturday, Robert has offered to give them his market timing book, which is worth $35. And I love that market timing book. I've, um, I've uh, had him sign a number of them and give them, given them to uh, young folks who are starting off in their uh, building their independent financial uh, wealth. And I've... Um, Known Robert now for eleven years, and ten years I've signed. I've uh, gotten his uh, weekly, uh, the nice weekly, his bi-monthly newsletter, which is uh, just fantastic wealth of information that saved me, um, well, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars by uh, by following his advice. So, um, so again, uh, go to sjrei.org to sign up for the June nine uh, monthly meeting where Robert will be speaking. And also sign up for the seminar workshop, which is on the uh, Saturday from 9 to 4.30. To 4.30. So uh, don't miss that. You're going to get a lot of, a lot of uh, wealth of, of information. And uh, Robert's one is called, called the timing right for, um, for quite some time now. Uh, Robert, any, uh, any wrap-up comments here? No, I just I really look forward and hope a lot of people show up at our, at both the meeting and the the seminar because as I like to say that I can't save souls if the church is empty. So <laughs> the, but what you're going to learn, anybody that uh, that attends the the meeting on June 9th and the seminar on June 11th, 
I guarantee you 100% that you are not going to be disappointed. Never disappointed when you come. <laughs> well, I've been, this will be the sixth seminar, Lori, that I've done, and it's amazing that the testimonials I get thereafter. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people find it, find it uh, amazing what they're able to do, not that they'll do it, but at least it opens their mind that you can protect yourself and do things, you know, to take advantage of trends as opposed to have the trends take advantage of you. Can't wait to have you, Robert. It's always a pleasure having you up here. I always learn something, uh, uh, a lot of things new. And, and I if, want to hear, Tom, when we have dinner on June 10th, I want to hear all about your trip up Mount Whitney. All right, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah, you you help inspire me to try to keep my bod here moving. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll that talk was, all about it. Fun. Nice meeting you, too, Laurie. I'll meet, I'm, I'm sure I'll see you again at the, on June 9th, but nice meeting you on the phone. Yes. Indeed. And Robert, always a pleasure uh, having you on the air. and uh, Dear friend that you are. And, uh, Laurie, thank you for uh, being here to co-host this with me today. Go to TomWilsonProperties.com to hear uh, Robert Campbell on the other guests that we have on on a weekly basis or subjects that are of interest to you, such as uh, about home uh, turnkey homes, about commercial properties, about commercial syndications, and see what our latest products are. A lot of uh, white paper and education information that's, uh, that's available there. You can sign up for our uh, weekly newsletter. Again, on TomWilsonProperties.com. So, um, again, thank you, Robert and Lori. And we're looking forward to having Robert up here uh, next week. This is Real Estate Radio Live on KDOW 1220 AM. And remember, the only thing that matters is what you do next. Thanks for being with us. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit RERadioLive.com. That's RERadioLive.com. Tune in. Log in, download our podcast, discover more at reradiolive.com, reradiolive.com.